In today's episode, we're going over the best side hustles for extra income for physical therapists. Let's do it. So I, I say this stat a lot and, you know, it's, it's probably getting old at this point, but I think it's super relevant for physical therapists. I don't know. We have a lot of physical therapy students and people that are considering physical therapy school and physical therapy as a profession come into our clinic at Champion PT and Performance. And they're trying to figure out whether or not they want to become physical therapists. And as much as I kind of hate to say this, I think it needs to be said. PT school is just extremely expensive. And then when you come out, you don't make nearly as much as other professions, right? Uh, and these stats are real. They're coming from Danny Mata. This, this is actually from um, APTA, Journal of the American Physical Therapy Association. And they were looking at students um, that had graduated, so no longer students, but graduates, I think in 2018, right? When they graduated, excuse me, they graduated around 2018 and they were looking at their finances a couple of years out of school. And the average student physical debt was 142, a student debt was $142,000. And the average salary at the time is around 91,000. And if you're an outpatient, it's going to be lower than that. All right. 91 is actually quite high. Um, the average software engineer student debt is $36,000, but their average salary is 121,000. Okay. Um, and you'll find professions like that all over the place. Um, you know, a big one is PA, right? PA only costs two years. It's cheaper. You come out making more. So if you like helping people and you like the medical profession, you like PA and you like PT, you really have to like physical therapy a lot to even go into the career. Right. Um, but that being said, PT is an awesome career. It really is good. And most of you guys watching probably are physical therapists, right? So at this point, if we want to make a little extra money, probably doesn't make sense to go back to PA school, although that's an option. Uh, how can we make our situation a little bit better? Right. So again, as physical therapists, we're swimming in debt. Um, career as a physical therapist is great, but it doesn't make as much as other professions. Okay. Uh, because of that, we don't have as much income and we have a lot of debt. Uh, generally speaking, physical therapists are not business minded. One of the reasons why people actually like physical therapy school is because when you get out, you get a job that's 40 hours a week. You don't have to think about getting more patients. You don't have to think about running a business and making enough every month so you can cover your overhead. And it's a very much a set and forget kind of job. Right. And I think that's very attractive for folks going into physical therapy. And they do that because they don't want to think about all these variables. But the problem ends up becoming you don't learn the skills you need to make more money. Right. Um, running a business is hard. I run a business. I love it. It's amazing. I do it because I love doing it. Uh, and also because it makes me a lot more income. Um, but for the average person, it's it's very challenging. And it's, it's not really the first step, I would say, in terms of making a bit more income. I'll talk about why in a second. So in today's video, um, I want to show you an easy side hustle. Okay. Uh, basically, we don't want it to be very challenging to make more money. We want it to be nice and easy. Uh, selling things and making more income is not always easy. Uh, there's a few ways that I believe physical therapists can do it in an easy manner. Okay. And we'll discuss those and I'll just talk about how to go about it. Uh, I have used all of these things myself in the past. I actually dropped off a lot of these over the course of time because I found more lucrative uses of my time and I was doing other things that I found more valuable and I liked a little bit more. So, so, so one of the key points today about these side hustles, uh, I think the first one is that your side hustle has to be lucrative. You don't want it to be a sidestep. You can work more hours as a physical therapist and make more money. You can definitely do that. And that's actually not a bad idea, right? So if you're not patient, uh, physical therapist, maybe you work on the side in the sniff or you work in a hospital or something like that and you make more money. Um, if you can make more money doing that, great. But I want to make sure that you're, you're making more than you usually do. Okay. And you'll have to do a little bit of math. I'll do it with you so we can make some sense of it. So it depends on how much you're making currently. Let's say your current income is $80,000, right? Let's say you're an outpatient clinic you're making around 80,000. You want to make some more. I think you have to factor in your benefits. So essentially you're getting paid for your, your paid, your, your healthcare, uh, pay time off vacation time. Maybe they're matching something in an IRA. So you have to take that all into account. And I'm just going to say that maybe that extra money is $20,000 that you really don't get, but it's actually going towards something. Uh, and it could be higher than that. Right? So let's say on average, you're making around a hundred thousand dollars per year. If you factor in all these benefits. Okay. It's easy to just do a little bit of math. So $100,000, if you're working, I'm, I counted in 52,000, or excuse me, 52 weeks in a given year, uh, just because you're getting paid vacation. So you can you can bet that you're 
you know, person employing you is thinking about the vacation they're giving you when they give you this salary. Let's say it comes out to $1,923 per week. And let's factor in how many uh, hours per week you work. Obviously, it's going to be variable. Uh, in most outpatient clinics, you're going to be working 40 hours a week. Uh, but let's be honest, you got notes, you got other stuff going on. Uh, let's say it's at least 45 hours a week. Sometimes it's as high as 50 or more for some of these clinics, right? So this comes out to around $43 per hour. So when you're deciding what kind of side hustle you're going to be using and also how much you're charging your clients, you have to think about how much money you're currently making per hour. So what I recommend is this has to be a good sidestep. So if it's not a substantial margin above $43 per hour, it's probably not worth your time. You can just do more physical therapy and probably get paid more, you know, sniff or hospital or something along those lines. Okay. The only thing I will say is that I'm going to recommend a few things, personal training and programming, a little sneak peek for you. Um, that's usually more fun than working at a sniff, depending on what you like. Okay. So if you love sniffs, nothing against sniffs or hospitals, go and do it, right? It's going to pay you. Um, but if you want to do something that's a little bit more fun, then I'd say go for it. Um, Dale Dice says writing a book's an option. Thanks, Dale. I really haven't gotten around to reading your book yet. I apologize, but I will. <laughs> um, and the second piece is that I think this has to be easy, right? Like I said before, running a business is not easy. There's a lot of unpaid time that goes into this. You have to basically figure out a problem that needs to be solved and sell a solution to people, you know, and that could be a product, that could be a book, like Dale was saying. That's a lot of work on the back end. And then you got to sell it, right? And that's challenging as well. So, is that a bad idea? No. But is it easy? No. And it's also an abstract way of thinking. If you haven't done this before as a physical therapist, it's not, right? So, I, I think it has to be a nice, easy progression. You have to have people that have a problem you can solve very quickly and easily, people that already trust you. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm going to be recommending what I do. The other piece I'll say is, you know, what about cash-based PT? That's what you do, Dan, right? Isn't that a good option? Yes, I think it's a good option. Uh, the, the other piece about this is that there is still um, some barriers to running your own cash-based place, right? So it's a good eventual transition, but it's not that easy per se, right? You have to be HIPAA compliant. How do you bill your patients? How do you give them the receipt they can they submit to the insurance, right? You have to think about it, um, having insurance cover yourself. Uh, there's a bunch of obstacles there. I think it's a good long-term strategy, but it might not be the first place that you look. Um, and the other option I'll say is that I used to work in a outpatient clinic that was in network with insurance. So basically we did all your billing for you, uh, so that you can get your insurance reimbursement, uh, when you go to the clinic right now, we're out of network providers, meaning that we give you a receipt and you just have to submit yourself. Um, some in network clinics have a cash rate, but the problem with that is that basically you get paid your salary to be seeing patients that are paying a cash rate. So you're not making more per hour. Uh, so I just think that that's something that you should be thinking about with your patients. Okay. So, and the third piece I will say, and this is a little bit outside of the lesson today, and we're not going to get too much into it, but you probably need to protect yourself a little bit. Okay. So if you're going to be writing programming or personal training for folks, especially doing any in-home or personal training, uh, you probably want to make sure that you have some sort of insurance. You probably want some sort of train certification. Uh, it makes sense to open up an LLC helps to protect yourself. Also, you get a lot of good tax write-offs at the end of the year. Uh, maybe I'll go in depth about this later, uh, but suffice to say, it's probably worthwhile you look into these things a little bit just to protect yourself. Last thing you want to do is get sued, trying to make more money, and then you lose all your money. That's not good, right? Boom. All right. And I also want to let you know about my fitness pain free mini course. It's a free mini course. If you want to check it out right now, uh, if you're on Instagram watching live, you can go to my profile to the highlights, click on the fitness pain free mini course to download it. Uh, if you're watching the recorded version of this, I will put a link in the show notes so you can check it out. Anyway, like I said, completely free. You can download it. We go over four main lessons. The first one is how traditional schooling has failed us. I love PT school. I learned a ton. The only problem is we didn't learn how to be experts working in strength and fitness. Second lesson we go over is seven reasons why folks get hurt in the gym and how to get out of pain. So essentially, if you don't understand why folks are getting hurt in the gym, then it's a little bit more challenging to rehab them. And then ultimately, you're not going to know how to keep them safe in the future. So I'm going to go over seven reasons why I believe folks get hurt and then what you can do about it. Next step is four simple steps to getting your clients out of pain. So rehab can be fairly complex. I don't think it needs to be. I make it extremely simple, uh, especially for your complex patients where you're like, oh my God, where do I start? I'll teach you how to simplify it where to start, and how to progress over the course of time. Next step is how to build the career of your dreams and earn the respect of your community. I think you guys watch Fitness Pain-Free and other continued education because you like to learn and you want to be a better clinician. 
but that's really because you want other folks to respect you and value you. Okay. Especially the folks in the community you like to serve. So I'll teach you a little bit more about how to do that. Again, the link is in the show notes. If you guys want the most comprehensive certification that I offer, when you sign up for the fitness pain-free mini course, you'll immediately be enrolled into a waiting list for my fitness pain-free certification. It truly is like a university education for working with folks in the strength world, strength and fitness world. Uh, so if you're interested in that, definitely sign up for the fitness pain, uh, pain-free mini course. Uh, this certification is open for enrollment four times per year. Uh, there is a waiting list to get in. I'll notify you when it opens again. So definitely check that out. Boom. All right. So what is this side hustle we're talking about? Uh, the side hustle is writing some training programs after patient dis or discharge. It's also personal training. And the last one is doing some sort of strength conditioning or return to sport after your patients have finished up with their um, uh, per, excuse me, physical therapy, and they're no longer getting insurance coverage, but they still need to get back to sport. Okay. So why programming? I guess what is programming? So essentially your patient comes to you because they have Achilles pain. They're an avid runner. They love running. Okay. And you give them a really good rehab uh, slash strength program to get them back to running. Okay. And after discharge, they're like, you know what? I, I want to kind of stay safe in the future. I want to get better at running. I want to do some strength and conditioning. It's going to make me a better runner. I don't really trust the other personal trainers out there. You seem to be really good at it. Can you help me out? Right. And as a physical therapist, that's a resounding yes. If you have any skill in writing strength and conditioning programs, if you have any skill in writing running programs, you can certainly help this person out. And the thing about this is it's a very smooth and easy transition. So think about it this way. Patient came in. They couldn't run. Running is the thing they love the most. Their Achilles is killing them. They feel like they're never going to get back to running. Okay. It sucks for them. All of a sudden they meet this guide, right? You, and you're this kind of Yoda figure that heals them, gets them out of pain, gets them back to training, right? And save their life. Okay. I know I'm being dramatic here, but patients really will love and trust you if you can do that for them. And it's a very, very easy transition to continue helping them in the future. Okay. Like I said earlier, when you're trying to start a side hustle or starting a business, you know, finding folks out there where you can solve their problems is a little bit more challenging, but literally you have a constant stream of people where you're fixing their problem over and over and over again, every single patient, every single day, this is going on. So if they want some sort of continued programming that has to do with strength conditioning, running, whatever sort of fitness thing that they're into, this is a very, very easy transition. Okay. The other piece is that it can be very lucrative and it's very easy to set this up, right? So, you know, what I've done in the past is essentially you continue meeting with them. Usually it's virtual. Let's say you do in a one hour Zoom session where you're asking about their fitness goals. You talk a little bit more about what they've been doing from a strengthening perspective, run perspective, and then you put together a training program for them, right? And they go off and they do that on their own and they have some sort of support from you. Maybe that's tech support. Maybe they're sending videos of themselves training. Uh, maybe they get a little bit more irritated in their Achilles and they want some guidance on how they can kind of get over that hump and what they should do for training modifications until they start feeling better again, right? And I've seen rates all over the place for training programming, uh, 150 to 250, even more, right? And I know that sounds like a lot uh, for some folks and some folks maybe like that's a little bit cheap, but people really are paying this much and they're paying personal trainees for this. And not that, you know, personal trainers can't be phenomenal. They, they really can be, but you also got to keep in mind, you have a, you know, a doctorate in physical therapy and you're licensed as a provider to help these folks. Um, and you're good at it. So I think you need to charge your worth, right? But if you think of it this way, if you have maybe five of these guys, let's say you work your way up to 10, which is a lot of work, but 10 and you're charging 200 bucks an hour, a couple extra thousand dollars in your pocket every month. And that's, that's great to pay the bills, right? So if you're making another... I don't know, so let's say $20,000 a year, $25,000 a year, all of a sudden your salary is looking a little closer to six figures, right? And that's pretty dang nice, right? So very, very easy transition programming. Next one we got is actually personal training. Uh, so I was a personal trainer for several years prior to going to uh, physical therapy school. So for me, personal training is something I love and I've done for years already. Uh, so for me, it's, it's not that hard to do personal training. I know a lot of physical therapists were personal trainers or they did some personal training throughout PT school. So they actually have these skills, you know, in their back pocket. 
Um, but I think most personal or excuse me, physical therapists, um, just having been a physical therapist for a period of time allows you to know how to do fitness and rehab, or excuse me, just fitness, uh, pretty well. Right. So do I recommend getting another certification, learning some more, becoming better as a personal trainer so that you can better help your patients after discharge? Of course. Right. Uh, but personal training is, is a very good option. So there's a few options you can do with personal training. Uh, one of which is home personal training. One of the reasons I say this is because you don't need to have, uh, much of a setup at all. And you don't have to pay someone else to use their facility. Right. Uh, and a lot of patients already have a home gym setup, right. Or you can have a few inexpensive pieces of equipment you can bring to your uh, clients' homes. Right. And largely in terms of what you can charge per hour, it, it's so variable based on where you live in the United States. Right. Um, but it's very reasonably charging up to $150 per hour and that money all goes into your pocket. So if you're working with a person for one hour and you got to make sure you factor in your travel time, so maybe that's 15 minutes getting there, 15 minutes getting home. So let's say it's an hour, half of your time, you're getting paid $150, you know, that's three to four times more than you normally make per hour. So that's certainly worth it, right? You can also consider doing personal training within a gym. The only problem with the gym is that they end up taking a percentage usually. So you're making a commission for every person that, you know, comes through the door. Uh, some of the higher end um, personal training clubs, maybe they're charging their clients $150 per hour. Maybe you see half of that at $75 per hour. Still pretty dang good, right? But you also have to keep in mind it's not going to be good as home training, right? And the other thing I've seen a lot uh, more recently at physical therapy clinics is that maybe you can work something out with your boss, right? Or maybe you own your own clinic. You can do this yourself. Um, you can essentially do some personal training within the physical therapy setting, right? So that's a really easy transition. Maybe you have a lot of post-op, um, knee replacement patients, and they want to do some fitness when they finish up. If you're one of the physical therapists on staff, maybe you continue doing some fitness once a week with these folks, maybe after hours, before hours, or maybe around lunch when things are usually a little bit more slow, um, from a physical therapy perspective, make some extra bucks and have a good setup at your current facility. So you get paid a decent uh, commission, right? So some really good options for personal training. The next big opportunity is going to be doing some sort of strength conditioning or return to sport for your patients. Uh, one of the reasons why this is a great opportunity is because insurance is pretty terrible in terms of reimbursing for return to sport. I get it, right? Insurance companies don't want to pay for everything. And, you know, physical therapists, we're kind of guilty. I think we've shot ourselves in the foot a little bit by doing too much treatment that we probably didn't need to do. Insurance companies eventually start policing us. They hire third party providers. And all of a sudden, if you ever jump with one of your patients, the insurance company is like, what are you doing jumping? We're not going to cover any of this, right? So it's a huge pain in the butt. Um, and one of the major problems you'll see is that good example is post-op ACL reconstruction. Um, our return to sport rates, they're not great, probably because we don't do a good job with the later stages of rehab, right? Insurance companies don't want to cover any sort of return to sport. However, they'll cover another ACL reconstruction surgery if you get re-injured. So the, the system as a setup isn't great. But what that does is it creates a tremendous opportunity for you to make some more money. Why? And why is that? Because let's say you have a post-op ACL reconstruction, right? We know that we want to try to rehab for around nine months until we return back to sport. And let's say the insurance company is cutting you off at the three-month mark, right? You essentially have nine or excuse me, six more months until you get to the nine month mark with these patients. Right. And in good faith, I can't tell my patient like, all right, you're three months in and insurance cuts you off. You're ready to go back to sport. No, they're not. Right. So you can very clearly tell them you need more work. And I apologize. The insurance company doesn't cover it. But we actually have a service. I have a service that I can use to help continue writing programming for you continue doing training for you so that when you get back to the nine month mark, you're actually ready to return to sport. Okay. So this ends up being an extremely easy transition. Uh, oftentimes it's pretty heartbreaking for patients to, to learn that their insurance companies are not going to cover their, you know, any sort of return to play uh, and it stinks, but you're there to help them. So if you can help them out, it ends up being a tremendous win-win because you can make a bit more cash, obviously. And then the patient's happy because they have a solution to the problem, which is getting back to their sport safely. Okay. So really good opportunity. So one more time, fitness pain free mini course, you can download it right now. My profile on the highlights on Instagram. If you're watching the recording of this, then uh, check out the show notes. So you can download it and you can be enrolled into the fitness pain free certification waitlist when it pops up. Okay. 
And I think that's it for today. Right now, I'll take some questions. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, shoot them into the comments. I'll get to them now. And if I don't get to your question, for whatever reason, if I miss it, if you're watching the recording of this and you end up you know, submitting a question, I'll get to it later. I'll respond in the comments. And if it's a really good question, I'll just make a show episode about it. Uh, Dale Dice said writing a book is an option. Very tough to get other therapists to even look at it, though. But don't let that stop you. So Dale, uh, you know, funny story. Dale sent me his book recently. And I told him I'd read it. And I've just been swamped with work. Um, and he wants me to take a look at it. <laughs> so that's kind of like a, a little funny comment there on the side. But Dale, I'll get back to you. I promise. I'm just swamped. I got a million and one things going on right now. So thank you for sending it over. Let me check the comments right now. See if you have any questions. Uh, again, if you have a question, shoot it over right now. I'll answer it. Boom. Boom. While I'm looking, thank you so much for joining, everybody. Always appreciate it when folks do join. Hopefully, you guys are learning something. It's not a waste of time. Scrolling, scrolling. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. Nice shirt. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, Tomas. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Scrolling. Nice. Great attendance today. That's actually better than I usually do. We got around uh, you know, 15, 20 folks on, um, which is amazing. You know, really happy that folks uh, care enough to to join me on these. So I appreciate it. You know, the reason why I do this is for you guys, obviously, but it's also for me, it's a selfish move just because I, I love doing it. And it's really cool. That I've been able to make this into a business. So I uh, always want to take the opportunity to thank you guys uh, for joining me uh, again. Any questions shoot in the comments, I will get to them later. That's it for this week. I'll see you next week. Thank you guys. I'll talk to you later.